Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge, judge, judge. Congratulations. Let me start with Judge uh, Baggio. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Judge, uh, tell me about Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Uh, Title VI, I believe, Senator, is the provision of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which uh, prohibits the discrimination based on religious preferences, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. May I, may I strike that? I'm sorry, Senator. I was thinking of Title VII. Um, apologies. Uh, as you're well aware, I'm sure from my record, Senator, in my 18 years of, as a federal litigator, as well as my four and a half years on the state court bench, I didn't have the opportunity to litigate issues related to Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. Uh, so apologies for the misstatement. And were I to be so fortunate to be confirmed, Senator, I would make sure with no uncertainty that I would be fully fluent in that issue were it to be presented to me on the bench. Okay. Uh, Judge, Bis is it Bisco? It's Brisco. Brisco, I apologize. No problem. Tell me about Title VI of the Civil Rights Act 1964. Um, Senator, in my 17 years as a member of the bar and five years on the bench, I have not had the occasion to address Title VI um, in my career. However, if I am so fortunate to be confirmed as an Article III judge, I would certainly research and study to be prepared to address that issue, sir. Judge Lund. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. I cannot add anything that my panelists have not otherwise add. I can also assure you, though, in the 15 years that I've had the privilege to serve as a judge, that particular provision has not been put before me. But if it were to, I would faithfully review it and appropriately apply all uh, Supreme Court, United States, and Seventh Circuit Court precedent um, that's put before me. Well, Title VI, Title VI is kind of timely, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure you all read the newspapers, right? Okay. Um, Judge Baggio, where, where does the standing requirement come from? Senator Kennedy, the standing requirement stems from the cases and controversies uh, provision of Article Three. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Judge Briscoe, I got it right this time. Tell me about the law of the case doctrine. Um, the law of the case doctrine is when a case has been adjudicated, then there cannot be any other collateral claims stemming from um, the issues that were already litigated. Okay, thank you for that. Tell me about, Judge Lund, tell me about federal preemption. About, uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, in just using the words in and of themselves, I would assume that uh, that the phrase speaks for itself, that federal law would preempt anything else that would come before it. But again, if I were posed with that particular um, legal phrase, I would do all that I could to faithfully review what specifically it is about and faithfully apply that definition to whatever the situation was that was posed in front of me. Well, where does federal preemption come from? Well, federal preemption comes from the supremacy clause that federal laws in the Constitution are supreme and state courts are required to uphold them. And how do you know if there's federal preemption? Um, again, I would look towards um, Article 6 of the Constitution, which, again, is the provision in which... Um, you, won't, you won't find it there. How do you know uh, when federal preemption uh, happens? You're going to see it a lot as a federal judge. 
Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Again, I would be looking towards um, Supreme Court precedent, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals precedent to review any of those particular issues that would come before the court and would faithfully apply them. You don't know the rule for determining pre federal print. Pre I could not accurately uh, articulate that today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much to the nominees. There may be written questions coming your way, and if they do, please respond as, in a timely fashion if you can.